Hello and welcome. This tutorial will be about materials. It uh, has three parts. Um, the first will be about shaders, the second about textures, and the third about mapping. We're going to learn how to put different materials on our objects. And it might be the easiest to start over with the shading which will we do now that's the standard layout you're going to have um, I think for now we um, can keep it the way it is it look like this alright and typically you would create a material down here in the material manager by either double clicking right in this gray field just double click there and a new material gets created it might look like this in your case and there's another way to create a material namely by just clicking on create and then here on top of the list new material I would really recommend you to name the materials right after you created them by double clicking on those tiny names there and just call it by what it is not where you put it so maybe concrete if you want to delete a material just click on it until it gets highlighted and then press delete if you want to make a copy of a material just uh, hold down control and pull the mouse somewhere drag and drop it so now this new material is named concrete.1 automatically and now you can rename it to wood now the usual workflow is like this there is some object in your scene and if you want to apply a texture to it just drag and drop it go from concrete to that from the material to this object and now this texture is applied you can tell that it worked by looking at the object manager here right after the cube our material is applied it's shiny and white just like here so now how do you remove textures that are not used in the scene there's a special function for that just click on function and go to remove duplicate materials that way wood will get deleted when I click it because wood is not applied anywhere let's have a look remove duplicate materials and now it's gone so now how do you change this material just click on it once and again you just have a look at the attribute manager there's anything um, you can change about the material let's first go to basic there is of course uh, a place to change the name to something different then that's pretty important you can activate and deactivate channels if you have a look up there whatever is ticked gets up there in the list if I remove it then our list gets smaller so first of all I would just um, activate the color channel and here I can do basic stuff like what color does this object have in my case I use the uh, HSV model but I think by standard 
RGB is activated. RGB mix it, mixes up the colors in red, green and blue tones. If you are used to that then it might be quite easy for you um, to mix your own color using those tiny little sliders right under the bars. I personally like HSV better so in case you do too just click on this small arrow and hit HSV. HSV works like that you have all those colors just like on a wheel from red over blue to red again so I can just uh, use like the color in general so maybe I want a yellowish green next step would be to choose a saturation to the right hand side that's really strong saturation and it turns towards gray if you put it to the left hand side then the last thing is the brightness you can turn it really bright at the right side or towards black to the left hand side my general advice would be to rarely use fully saturated colors because they appear really really strong in your image I would be careful with that and full brightness has a similar effect if you like so now to see the effects better let's build a little sculpture on top of our cube let's put a sphere there now the sphere is right in the middle of the cube now so let's just pull it out by hovering over the arrow that goes up right after you selected the sphere move it upwards and you can hold down shift if you like until it shows 200 centimeters so that way the ball should be right on top of the cube so now how to change the material from cube to sphere you can just drag and drop it here in case you would like to have a copy um, hold down control while dragging and dropping and then both objects get the same materials alright so the first important thing is not all those channels here but the actual shading shading is about how material reacts to light so we should put a, uh, up a um, light first just um, to have a look how this ball gets shaded just use that first light we get here and move it a little to the side hit command R to render it out and turn your camera or the light so that your ball is like halfway lit and you might want to have some differences in those single surfaces like this is brighter this is half bright and this is a little darker alright so now let's hit command R again and have a look at the way the ball shades from a bright spot getting a little darker here and then turning to the shadow so now this behavior is really important for getting an idea of this objects material whether it's 
rather soft or really really hard whether it's yeah something like a cushion or something like plastic so let's go to the materials illumination tab and first let's see the differences between Fong, Blin and the Oran Naya model. First there's Fong and there might be little difference to Blin. Look at this edge here that's really sharp now and let's see if it turns when we use Fong. It hardly does but maybe it does when specular is turned on. That's like a little highlight on the material. And we might experience differences here. If you might just have a look, using Blin model, we get a really, really soft highlight. If we use Fong, it's getting more like plastic. That would be the first difference. If you use more complex materials, you might see a little differences between between Fong and Blin. And I use the Fong material mostly. It's activated um, by standard and it's good for all solid materials, I'd say. Whenever I render a soft material, like a cushion or so, I use Orinaya. Orinaya is good for making stuff look a little softer. So let's just start what we can change here with a diffuse fall off. You can go below 0%. Um, that's the case for many many things that we can change them over 100% or less than 0%. So I would always try uh, at those different fields what numbers you can put in and see the effect. First by extreme values you can see here I use the fall off by minus 100 percent and the whole look changes and if I go to plus 100 I get a really really crisp line here. So even this looks like it's just a little uh, like not important stuff you can you can do a lot of effects just by changing the font shader of course you can scroll over this number and just check bit by bit what kind of effect you like so now let's change over to blind shader um, again, I start at 0% and let's just have a look what it does when I go below 0%, the transition from light to dark gets softer again and if I go um, way up to 100, 100 something percent, it almost looks cartoony. That's the blind shader. Then we have Orinaya. There's more to be controlled here. Um, first of all, we have the diffuse fall off again with similar similar effects. Then we got something called diffuse level. You can sort of make this material appear a bit darker while still having that highlight here or you can make this diffuse level really really high think of plants for example if you want to simulate that there is a material that catches a lot of light and is a little translucent maybe or just bright in general you can raise up the diffuse level then we got roughness You should keep diffuse level at 100, otherwise it turns black. And now let's have a look what roughness does.
it's a little hard to to see but in a more complex light situation um, this will take effect and maybe at the beginning you would be asking why would I change like stuff from 0 to 10 percent just for changing the looks of a material a tiny little bit but if you are into shading or rendering later on you will really appreciate those tiny controls you have here between different shading models so keep that in mind um, I would just like to repeat the main difference is between the Fong shading model and Oranaya. Fong is for solid stuff and Oranaya is more for soft material. Okay, so now let's get more into detail. Um, first we go to the um, color tab and we were at changing the colors. Of course, if you are more used to different stuff, you can just click here in the big um, green field and then you get a color picker. Maybe you are more used to that. <clears throat> and you can, you can change your colors. There's even a way to have a color t uh, picker, like a table, where you can um, save, like I just used the show quick storage so if you have some favorite colors you use any time then you can just put them there by dragging and dropping just take it from there and drop it over that field and then this color is saved and there's a lot of uh, just the way you would like to work there should be that option for you I just keep it like this and now I just changed my colors quickly and you can see immediately when rendering it took effect so you have another option which is called brightness brightness if you turn it to zero turns the material color to black uh, by standard it's set at 80% you can pull it up to maybe 100 if you like or even go way over 100% to turn it brighter and brighter in this case this uh, is to be seen in combination with the brightness value here but later on you might have more complex situations and then you will use brightness especially if you have bitmap textures applied this can be done here at textures there's many options at first I would like to show you those here in the middle you have <coughs> um, the possibility to create a color that's the same just like here um, you can open options about the color by clicking on this little um, icon here alternatively maybe you collapse it again you can click on this big field where it says color at the moment click on it and there you can change your color as well that's the same as if I had clicked on this icon same menu here and now I can go for a different color so what's the point in creating two colors first of all this color below in the texture fields overrides the color on top here but now it's possible to mix those two colors by changing the mix strength this could be animated later on as well so you can turn a material from green to orange if you like 
and you have a mix mode you can change it to add so the texture or excuse me the shader gets brighter you can subtract the colors from another or even multiply them this starts this kind of mixing starts to make more sense when you're using different stuff I would like to show you the gradient next gradient is what you might know from other graphic software that's a way of having a fading from one color to the other you can just maybe it's easier if we just click on this big button here gradient um, <clears throat> first of all you have different types of gradients you can change the direction using V and U in this case this goes from horizontal to vertical and you have a lot of other fading effects then you can tell cinema where to start with the fading and you can even create new um, colors in that gradient by just clicking right underneath the bar and if you click at those little icons you can move them around how do you remove stuff just take that little icon and pull it down so it gets deleted if you want to change the transition speed between one color to the other you can use this little diamond here and move it towards one side or the other if you want to change the colors right white and black just double click on them and you get your color picker again and now you can choose a color for that and maybe I turn black into blue just like that and now we have a nice transition there's more options of course just click on that little icon here and you can change the way those um, colors get interpolated that concerns the transition just have a look I just scroll over them I don't even have to click on them it's enough to scroll over here and you can tell in some cases that there's a difference maybe it's more effective if we're using three colors then you can see a difference between smooth knot cubic knot there's tiny differences but maybe you see from this yellow wish tone to the blue tone there's a difference between smooth knot and cubic knots it's just a little softer transition cubic bias or bias linear gives you less of a choice but has okay transitions as well there's none in case you need to create a flag or something exponent up and exponent down might be useful as well of course you can position those gradients by numbers just click on one thing until this little triangle turns black and now you can put in the exact position say 50 percent there's a new kind of effect called intensity I just notice um, you can raise up and lower the brightness it has then if you have for example a not a radial but a circular transition 
there's options to to cycle around I think this has to do with uh, other situations doesn't take effect here but what I really like and think it's pretty cool if you just have a look here there is a way to turn those really um, regular transitions into turbulence so that doesn't look that predictable anymore that's pretty useful if you think of certain effects like for example rust or dirt or some stuff about landscapes there's this could be an island for example I mean there's really um, plenty of ideas you might come up with how to use the gradient shader of course you can reduce the octave so it gets really blurry or make it really detailed you can change the scale so this looks like very sort of split up in many many small points and this again leads to a more blurry um, result you can change the frequency and you should just play around with those settings because that's what you always do in 3D programs you have to experiment a lot and there might be many solutions for the same problem so it's really cool to just try out stuff another really important shader which is generated by algorithms as well is the noise shader. Just click on this little um, arrow and go to noise and you might have noticed that whatever is set in this um, area here gets deleted by using another shader. It just gets overwritten. If you just want to delete what you've done in the texture field, go to this arrow and click on clear. That way it gets deleted and now the color up here takes effect again. But now let's go for noise. And this noise looks at first like uh, it wouldn't be of much use, but there's so much you can change about the noise that you can actually create or imitate a lot of material like carpet floors, landscapes, like like the soil or yeah, just just anything that has some irregular stuff can profit by a little noise shader. Let's click on it. And there's plenty of options as I told you first of all there's two colors you can mix we can turn this into a, a warm darkish gray and instead of using pure white we again use something a little warmer and that looks like this now really important is um, this entry here global scale just put it to a smaller number and this gets this pattern gets denser and this could already be some material you see in real world if you make it really really small this might be a carpet floor if you turn it up that might be some stone if you turn it way up to maybe 500 or so this could be random spots you find outside on the streets so another important thing is how to make this transitions a bit more contrasty there's a low clip option and a high clip option so you can bring those colors um, more together this doesn't look too good here but if I change the scale 
that's a pretty interesting effect. This could be a cow, while this could be something different. Of course you can change the brightness. And the contrast, just like that. So to make effects more subtle, just lower the contrast. I'm not going to explain all this stuff. This has partially to do with animation, but I would really recommend to play around with all those settings. It's a really exciting world. So next let's go to the noise types and if you click on this list it won't uh, tell you much so it's really hard to say what's a Naki and what's a Luca or stuff like that. It's easier if you click just on this little arrow here and you get preview up op um, op um, images for any shader. So just have a look at this. There is things that remind a little to water surfaces like blistered turbulence then there is cell noise which looks like pixels that might be cool if you have some screens in your scene or a different pattern that looks like this maybe in a bathroom or so then you have Cranal shader which is really cool for organic stuff if you think of cells or anything that's within the body or has to look a little more organic that might be really cool then you have displayed turbulence electric and one of my favorites is FPM FBM is really cool for or really useful for um, if you have surfaces that are made of fabric then if you turn this down a little contrast wise and in terms of the scale this really looks like like some some stuff that feels really really um, soft Um, you have the fire shader. Just, just um, click your way through all those and have a look at them. Um, there's one more I want to show you, or maybe two. The cell Voronoi um, makes stuff look a little like metal. You know this special kind of metal that has those um, bits in there. And there is the Voronoi shader which is again quite useful for organic stuff that, ha that has little holes in it. Yeah, that's the noise shader. What else can I show you that's good for a start? Yeah, that might be interesting. Um, click on that little arrow here and go to surfaces we have a brick shader that's quite useful for us architects um, we don't have to photograph or use a photo texture for this we can just use the brick shader and there's a lot of uh, things we can change here the scale the width of each single brick, it, the height, whether they are shifted, reset, and I think it's a little self-explanatory. You can of course change the brick colors like this one and this one. I think you should know by now 
how to handle um, those gradients. You can even apply a texture. You can choose if you want to have alternative rows or not. And different kind of scales. Really good, really well done. Um, you can change pretty much anything you can imagine, even the gap color. And what would be a brick wall without noise? Okay, in architecture you don't like noise that much or, or dirt, but uh, yeah, you, you can apply this too. So that's the brick shader. There's so many more surfaces like the checkerboard. You can click here on shader. So if I'm too quick, I'm sorry, let's just do it again. We click here, go to surfaces and then checkerboard. And checkerboard has not that many entries on the shader. You can raise the numbers and this might be really useful later on if you ever do UV unmapping then you can check with this checkerboard shader whether the distribution of your um, UV map is evenly spaced apart from that you might have ideas for for using this shader for other purposes Cloud is kind of obvious, you get two colors, you can mix. This might be useful for faking chrome reflections. Cyclone is like a storm. Earth, that's not too usable in my opinion. Fire, that's more of a graphical effect. Flame, but it's quite cool. It's all generated out of um, algorithms, and you can change a lot. And you don't even need a texture for that. Um, let's skip all those things. Uh, but one thing that's really useful is tiles. Tiles is good within kitchens or bathrooms. Click on it, and you can change the colors of the tiles the grout color the thickness of the grout is controlled by grout width and bevel width that's really important and you can even check randomized color that way you can mix up your colors a little, like so. Of course you can change the scale. And now something that's really cool, there's not only those um, primitive patterns, there's much more. We got another brick shader, brick 2, just scroll over it, circles, different kinds of circles, lines, even parquet, planks, radial lines it's called. This might be good for a ter terrace. Sawtooth, so there's many patterns already set up for you within Cinema 4D. The other shaders are not really necessary now, but I would like to show you something which is a little more complicated now. 
and it's about the following situation. Um, let's just delete what we got in the texture field for now. And now what if you want to mix different kind of textures or noises or whatever. So the easiest way is to set up layers. Um, this works pretty much the way it does in Photoshop. So just click on make sure this field is empty at first. Click on clear for that and just set up layer. So the layer is an empty object now. Just click on it and you can load in the same stuff we had before like color, a gradient or a noise and let's just mix two noises with each other or make it even a bit more complex let's use a color first so that's our base color I click on it and might say I want red you have those arrows here I might have been using them in the last minute so they work like in a web browser back and forward and this arrow up goes up in the hierarchy so have a look I now I'm on the top when I click on this layer I go one step in then I click on the color I go in and if I want to get out just click on those that arrow up so now I've chosen my base color which is red sorry and within the layer I can now apply another shader for example a noise and now if you're familiar with Photoshop that shouldn't be too hard to understand you can activate and deactivate each layer by clicking on that eye you could rename each layer you get a little preview here if you click on it you get further um, things uh, settings and then th that here it starts to make sense you can change the blending modes from normal to pretty much anything Photoshop has to offer like multiply and multiply is used quite often you can mix in the tones of the noise for example from this layer um, to the base color we have in this layer so normal would just override it but you can of course reduce the opacity or have multiply screen and so on just have a look at all those settings and you can use endless numbers of um, layers for example I can put a really really fine noise on top of a big one and if you look at stuff around maybe in your room you will find out that no surface has one straight color there's always some variation and those noise shaders are really good for just making tiny bits of bringing tiny bits of variation in so it doesn't need to be set to 100% but maybe this surface right here might look more interesting than just a surface like a pure color this looks really artificial and mixing in some layers might lead to a more believable result how do you delete certain layers just click on them their names so uh, they turn white and hit delete and they are out again of course you can 
load image textures here but we'll do texturing later on. There's also effects that's pretty good if you have a texture loaded for example then you could change the hue and saturation just like in Photoshop. So that's really useful if you don't want to change your uh, textures anytime in Photoshop you have little helpers here. We might discuss those effects in detail when we go to texturing but for now that's it about the layer shader. Alright, so now here's the layer and that's all I did. An effect a layer that multiplies on top of another layer. I go up here and now something pretty useful. Imagine you have two materials but you don't want to set up this new material again. There's a way of copying stuff from one shader to another. Just hit this little icon here and go to copy channel and now I go to my new material and I can just click on that very same icon again and say paste channel. So this here is identical. So whatever I set up, there are ways to copy it. I just delete my new material and want to show you how to copy one setting texture-wise from one channel to another. Um, let's just activate luminance for a second on the basic and now what's the quickest way of transferring all those settings I did here those settings to luminance texture. The fastest way I know is just take this rectangle here drag and drop it, move it over to luminance and drop it right over texture. Now it's done. Quite simple. I just clear it here. So just take this rectangle and drag it over. So hover it over the channel you want to go in, go down to texture and drop it. All right. There is an alternative to this layer shader which is called Fusion. So now be careful if I click on Fusion or Layer Now the shader we have here will be put into the Fusion shader. That's not what I want in this case. I want to keep it simple. So first let's hit clear so there's no texture applied and let's deactivate the luminance channel otherwise we're not going to be able to see what we're doing in the color channel because the, the luminance channel is, is too bright so let's go to in the color channel to texture again and now let's have a look at the fusion shader the fusion shader works like this just click on it the fusion shader has a mask between two other shaders. So whenever you have, for example, a piece of grass in the one channel, let's just use for simplicity just the color, which is green, go up again, then, and we want to have a kind of sand here and now how can I control where there is the blend channel and when there is the base channel used. When I render it out just the blend channel gets used. I wouldn't do that sorry um, but instead let's use the mask in between and now we can for example use a noise shader and now the noise decides where each color or 
different shader in the blend and bass channels are applied. This works like that. Wherever there is a black spot, this color gets through and where there is a white spot, this color gets through. You can of course invert this result, so maybe I just told you it the other way around, but with invert mask this shouldn't be too much of a problem. And you can change the noise however you wish. And now I hope the idea gets clear. I can use a mask, this could be a graphic as well, um, to, to change the shaders. Let's have a bigger noise scale and now I can say for example in the blend channel I want to have a noise and in the other channel I want to have the color we had before. There is a lot you can do with that fusion shader especially for complex materials. Alright, I think that's about what you can do here. Let's care about the other channels. I just clear that one and leave a color in that color channel. And now let's have let's just go through all these channels one by one. You will all or mostly use them uh, but never all at the same time. So let's just um, leave color on and activate the diffusion channel. The diffusion channel is a way to kind of make those uh, materials appear less artificial. You can kind of dirt them a little. Um, for example if you, you put in noise and what the diffusion channel does is darkening um, those um, colors. Um, you can make it affect other channels that are not activated yet like luminance and reflection and you can of course uh, reduce this effect so it's not too obvious. You can tell here I just put in a little kind of diffusion but for checking the scale I leave it at 100% at first. If nothing is activated in your texture channel you can use brightness to darken the overall brightness of your material. So if you have something really complex set up in texture you can still make it appear darker just by moving down the diffusion. Whenever you have really, really big surfaces in your scene, you should, should think of um, the diffusion channel. It might make uh, your result a little more believable. Luminance is, works alone. You can use it in combination with color or not. Luminance, I think that's self-explanatory. Um, is for objects that emit light by themselves. Let's see the first difference. If I have just luminance activated without color, this thing get, gets a look like um, it's very, very flat. If I put color to it, the color channel, then I have some reaction to the light source I have here, so it doesn't look too flat. Luminance can be reduced like this and put up really really high even to more than 100%. That's good for anything like light bulbs or maybe advert on the street that it's lighting by itself or maybe screens and things like that. You can do by the way the very same stuff in each channel so putting up a noise within the luminance channel 
works just the same. Luminance works especially well together with the glow channel down here. So whenever you want to simulate something glowing really really strong then just put in some glow. I deactivate glow for now but not without showing you that you can fine-tune this effect as well. The inner strength is the glowing right on top of the object. The outer strength is this slight halo um, around the object. The radius is how far does this halo spread. And the rest you can check yourself. Luminance is explained by now, so let's go over to, to transparency. When transparent, transparency is activated, you at 100%, if brightness is set at 100%, you won't be able to see your object anymore because it's fully uh, see through. Um, but you can kind of reduce the brightness to something like 90% so you still be able to see the object. You can give the transparency an own color and when you're using bend objects or objects that are round you can turn on refraction 1.5 is a good value for um, for glass. You can look at Wikipedia if you there's a table <clears throat> on the refraction of surfaces, and so you can imitate water or diamonds and stuff like that by using different numbers for refraction. If you have a look, what it does, you can see by the preview. It's kind of bending the light, so anything behind our objects gets distorted. Internal reflections and exit reflections might lead to more exciting results, especially for glasses you put on tables or stuff like that. Fresnel reflectivity, it's all up to you to, to play around with those settings. There is an absorption color, so you can say after 100 units through the material from going looking at the surface and going through, it turns to, towards blue. So let's make this shorter. And you can tell on this side a little that after a while, uh, after some distance, um, the after some depth, the, the, the material color change. Then there's another effect called blurriness that takes a lot of uh, rendering time but looks really fascinating. It works like this. You can have your objects appear like they are um, a little rough on the surface or don't are not transparent fully but instead uh, more like a bit yeah just blurred like in a bathroom window or something always make sure you don't use too many samples and the accuracy can be lowered as well those um, numbers are not fixed, but I would always try to go, go as low as possible. So maybe maximum samples and accuracy is okay like this. So the rendering is a lot faster when you don't use um, a too high accuracy. 
and maximum samples. I just remove total internal reflection and exit reflections and put some other object behind this one to make the effect more clear. First of all, Let's um, have a look at what the reflection does. That's the bending we got. So in a situation with reflection one, the line in the background doesn't get bent. It's straight. And if you use reflection, refraction, it goes like this. Same with blurriness. If we look at the refraction like this, it goes, it's really crisp, it's sharp. And if you turn on blurriness, this corner, this borders get really, really washed out. So if you use a low value like 2%, then you have this effect very, very slightly. The next important effect is reflection. I just delete the cube in the background. So what does reflection do? It reflects anything that's in your scene. Now when I render my stuff, I will have a little surprise. I see nothing because my objects have nothing they could reflect. So let's just use a sky. Don't use the physical sky, please, just the usual sky here. And let's have a look. I might reduce the reflection a little so it mixes it up. It mixes up with the color in the color channel. And now you can see my object is reflecting. If you turn the brightness down, the reflection gets really minimal. You can hardly tell it's there. If you turn it to 100, it reflects anything. That's really brutal in my case. And you can, of course, turn it up to more than 100. Then it looks like this. So for Chrome, you can go almost up to 100%. And for other surfaces you might use much lower values. Now please look at your surrounding and you will find out that almost any surface is reflecting in a way. It might be either that it's really really minimal or very much blurred. You can blur reflections just like we did with transparency so we can imitate the behavior of a lot of surfaces. Now there are a lot of um, surfaces that don't reflect their surroundings evenly. What I'm talking about is the Fresnel effect which means if you look at objects straight they don't reflect or they don't reflect much and if you look at surfaces from a really flat angle they start to reflect more and more. Let's have a look at this. This looks a little more like um, like some some car paint or something. Um, the effect goes like this the Fresnel or Fresnel shader has a gradient. This gradient works like this. Right stands for looking on it rectangularly, like from the front. 
if you put it up this will lead to its reflecting right here at the front and the flat view angle is to be set here maybe I don't put it on full white because white would mean 100% reflection and black 0% so I can say the more I see it from a flat angle the stronger the reflection and the more I see it from front the darker the reflection or the weaker the reflection so now I set up a material which reflects stronger when I see it from flat angle of course I could use the Fresnel for any other um, channel especially for transparency there is glass just let's copy this over Fresnel from reflection to transparency texture paste it and so you can make objects appear transparent at the flat angles here and less transparent here in reality this might be just the other way around so you if you think of windows I will just show you a piece of glass here like this is a window and if you look like this from this angle you're probably not able to see through this window anymore and if you look at it from here you can look through so a glass material would work like this I just turn off reflection for a second go to transparency and go to Fresnel so I say looking from the front I can almost see through and looking from a flat angle I turn it dark so we have a gradient from left to right from dark to bright I can see by the preview straight is see-through and flat angle is almost not see-through anymore apply it to my new window and I look from front I can see through more I look from a flat angle and it's almost opaque if I want to strengthen this effect I turn it more towards transparency like this don't need blurriness anymore so now it's from seen from front it's rather transparent seen from flat angle it's not I do it the other way around with the reflection I want the reflection to be not so obvious from front but from a flat angle it should be stronger let's just well, do this by moving it back here then you can tell there is a reflection seen from here and not really strong So now I can see a bit of a ref reflection and when I look from here the reflection is not really to be seen. Okay. This might uh, appear to you like um, very detailed but in architectural visualization this effect is totally standard you might need it for any 
desktop surface, even for walls, for windows, for metal and anything. So you really should check out the Fresnel effect for transparency and reflection. Let's turn it off, both, so we just have color activated. And in case you don't have a surrounding to reflect, then you can use environment. Environment needs a texture. I just take a cloud shader in this case and this fakes a reflection of stuff that's not there. Of course you can reduce the, the strength of that reflection. Yeah, honestly I don't use the environment channel too often but it's good to know and it's really quick at rendering. Then we have a fog effect. This simulates that those volumes are filled with fog. With distance you can say how dense the fog is and the brightness controls the strength of the effect. Might be useful sometimes, I rarely use it. Then really important channel is the bump channel. The bump channel only works if you have a texture applied or again something like a noise shader. And this makes your surfaces look like they are not even. If you look at the corners, you can tell that this is just the shader effect, but it's pretty convincing, especially on a smaller scale. Now those objects look like they are rough on their surface. I just changed the noise type and that's pretty fascinating. It doesn't take much time to render and now I can simulate plaster and any surface that's rough. I would, if it's not about glass or anything, always apply some sort of bump to your surfaces. You can regulate the strength of this effect from really really strong to rather subtle like this. You can go to minus which means uh, it appears like the stuff goes inwards and plus means outwards and you can go over 100% of course or to less than 0%. Mostly you probably will use something in the middle range and this effect works like that. You click on noise here for example and anything that is black or dark in your texture um, is a hole so it goes in the material and anything that's white goes out. So you can control this effect here with the strength or by the colors. They go together. The bump works together with reflection quite nicely. If we have a look here and it even reacts to the transparency so when you're um, using transparency the stuff gets distorted by our bump texture. I will just show you, I set the transparency refraction to 1.5 go over to bump, make the scale a little bigger and yeah it's kinda hard to see right now but believe me all these distortions are uh, or are they, they kind of um, respect the, the bump texture so you really get nice effects out of that. That's it for the bump 
Um, I won't discuss um, normal textures. They are not that easy to set up and are more used into real-time applications like video games. Let's deactivate reflection and transparency and have a look at alpha. Alpha is a way to cut out stuff. If you're just clicking on um, texture again and let's use some pattern like a checkerboard then you can see what this shader does it just cuts out stuff so wherever there is black in your texture it's getting fully cut out if it's white nothing will change at that place and if you have something in between like uh, gray then okay that's strange then it's getting a little okay so far as I know it was uh, a little different but uh, maybe I did something wrong here I don't know so usually you would use black and white textures think of silhouettes of trees or something or maybe another example you use tiles with um, holes in there it should be called circles and you put them to white by the way copying colors works just like drag and drop from here to there and that's a very fast way of putting holes into your geometry without actually modeling it and I would highly recommend you to do it that way because it saves a lot a lot of rendering time doing it like so okay that was it for the alpha channel of course you can invert the results so you have flying flying spots or something or dots um, and of course you can load in image textures we'll do this in the second part sorry that was it for alpha next we got specular specular fakes light reflections you can tell there's my light source it hits the surface here and uh, goes further to my eye so there's that kind of fake highlight or yeah and there's a few things you can change about it um, first you can do this make this highlight stronger so the material looks more like plastic or more reflective you can make this appear wider and maybe reduce the height of the effect so you get a really soft reflection I would always do this uh, together the, the specular effect together with the illumination here you remember we had different ways of shading models so Oranaya might make appear this rather soft and then you put together a nice specular Of course we can keep this at fong as well so we get more distinct specular effects we have we can use a fall off so we just have like a needle pinch like in the middle it's bright and it's getting getting less strong outside or the other way around if you want to have a cartoony effect just increase the fall off there's an inner width that means like the highlight keeps stronger and then suddenly decreases that's simulated by this little graphic here as well there is more than just um, the plastic mode for specular you can go to metal this makes all your material look darker 
so you would have to increase um, values like width and height and it's supposed to make your surface act more like metal does and there is colored so it the specular uses the same color the material has to be honest I mostly stay on plastic and you can even change the color of the specular by go activating on the basics specular color go over to specular color and then you can kind of tint the specular color you have here that might be useful for some sorts of um, car paint or metal that's or even glass that has some special effects to it sorry okay that was it about um, specular and specular color and there's one effect if bump remember that was roughening the surface if bump wasn't good enough for you and you have a lot of um, CPU power, a lot of processing power in your machine then you can use displacement effects they work not really similar to to bump but uh, instead they work like this I use a noise and the displacement shader takes the geometry that's there and kind of um, um, really um, manipulates the surface by black and white information. This only works for geometry you either imported from CAD applications or for geometry that's already converted to polygon objects. I will explain you more about this uh, or maybe I already told you about this in another tutorial. It will be found in CAD import and modeling so let's hit convert here and now this effect should work let me just show you um, with more extreme values I you just take um, an object hit this button here where my mouse just is and then you go back to your material and put the height to something higher and then you can actually deform your object accordingly to this map, this noise map here. So this might appear a bit rough to you now, so let's just use sub polygon displacement. This splits up your polygons into more parts and leads to a finer result. So now you can deform your objects easily with a displacement shader. Again, this is a very costly effect, so I would just use it if you are really close to certain objects and bump mapping is not enough. We use this sometimes for really rough stonework, but I wouldn't use it anytime, so mostly bump mapping will be okay. This one, you can of course, sorry, use them together like this. but you, you can't use it on any geometry. Your geometry must be very evenly subdivided. <clears throat> so that's displacement mapping and I think that's it for the shading part. So I don't need um, to repeat it, I think that's all the channels we got and here you can change things. So our next part you can change between documents going to window and then just change this. Our next part will be about how to import textures 
and put those bitmap textures into our shaders so that we can use for example noise and bitmap textures bitmap textures all together